Hey guys, Mac with MDC Diesel here. I wanted to go over shaft plate and how to check for it on a turbocharger and then hopefully clear the air on what shaft plate is and when to know when a turbocharger has actually failed or not. Um, I get a lot of questions on if the turbocharger is good or bad based off of shaft plate and I get a lot of people showing me videos and I always have to clear the air on it if it's good or bad because a lot of people misunderstand what shaft plate actually is. So I've got an S300 cutaway here in front of me and I want to demonstrate um, what shaft play is and then what is failing inside the turbocharger to cause the shaft play in the first place so you know what you're checking for and uh, how to know if it's good or bad or not. So first things first, let's go over the function of the turbocharger. You've got oil pressure that comes in and goes through these galleys right here and they come into each of the bearings. These are hydrodynamic journal bearings which essentially means that there's a shaft in bushing and that shaft has essentially got oil pressure between the bushings and the shaft as well as between the casting and the bushings um, causing those bushings to glide essentially on oil so they shouldn't be touching metal to metal while they're running uh, the oil pressure should basically suspend those the carrier bearings hold the shaft from moving up and down and side to side obviously but they don't obviously stop the shaft from being able to move forward and back so we have what's called a thrust bearing or thrust washer and thrust bearing up here at the front. That's what this piece is right here. And that essentially prevents the shaft from moving forward and back. And I'll show you kind of how that works. So the thrust washer sits on the shaft like this. See how there's a big notch down in the shaft like that. The casting of the center section, as you can see here, is pressed up against the back side of this bearing and then there will be an oil seal, which is this piece right here, this silver piece, that goes over the front of it and holds it in place. And then there's a C-clip that clips into the groove, as you can see up close. If I can get up close, there's a little groove right there with a C-clip in it. So essentially, once the shaft is pinned into that place, the compressor wheel is tightened down on it and holds the shaft pulled through and it essentially pulls the shaft tight against that thrust bearing um, and holds it in place. So that thrust bearing will prevent the shaft from moving forward and back. The thrust bearing is crucial because as you can see there's not much tolerance to these wheels being able to move forward and back and as you know with the compressor wheel they expand outward so they go behind this compressor housing a bit and if this moves forward even just a little bit, even a millimeter, it can contact this housing and these turbochargers can spin upwards of 100,000 RPM. So if they're spinning over 100,000 RPM and they contact this metal, you can imagine it'll probably cause a failure. So a thrust bearing, as you can see, is just a washer that sits inside of a bearing and it prevents the shaft from moving forward and back. So as I move this, you can tell there's no forward and back movement of this washer. It does not move pretty much at all. And when there's oil pressure, it fills up the little bit of gap that's even in there. So it's going to be a, a microscopic amount right there. But as you can see, it doesn't provide much resistance to side to side and up and down movement. There's actually nothing really holding it that way other than those rear bearings. And as you know, since there's some leverage on the front, it'll move up and down and side to side a bit. And there's also a little bit of play in those as well. So the further away you are from that point, it'll pivot a little bit more. So you will get some side to side shaft play and up and down shaft play, which is 100% normal for, an, for a general bearing turbocharger. That's perfectly fine on a brand new one. So if you get a brand new turbocharger and the side to side play, don't fret, that's how they're supposed to function. So as you can see, side to side, it moves just fine. This is a brand new bearing, as you can tell, not worn out. It's fine, but it shouldn't move forward and back at all. So as I'm pushing forward and back, that piece isn't moving at all. That washer isn't. So I've got in front of me a thrust bearing that has failed. Um, as you can see, there's a bit of a gap there. This one hasn't failed very majorly, but it did fail. 
and you can see there's a bit of a gap there. So whenever you move this piece, as you can tell, it moves forward and back. And so that holding the shaft will allow the shaft to move forward and back. And when that happens, like I said, the compressor wheel can contact the housing, bite into it, and then fail. So this is a worn out thrust bearing. As you can tell, this is a perfectly good one. No forward and back movement on that. So to check a turbocharger to make sure there is no forward and back shaft play, you essentially just grab the front of it and pull it forward and back with your hands. With your fingers, you should not be able to actually feel any forward and back movement. It should feel tight. Side to side, you can move it a little bit. As you can tell, there's some side to side movement. I'm pushing side to side on this, and it is moving a little bit that way because, like I said, the thrust bearing doesn't support it that direction. It's not supposed to. But forward and back, there is no movement. I can't budge that. It feels tight. That's a brand new charger. It's perfectly fine. So if your turbo has side to side movement, don't worry about it, especially if it's not dragging the compressor housing. If you can move it far enough sideways where you can drag the housing, I can't get this one to drag the housing. That means it's just fine. If you can get it to drag the housing, then maybe it has worn into the side a bit and caused it to do that. It's not very common for that. Um, usually if that's the case, it's because there's some forward and back movement and you may not be able to feel it. It's just so minuscule that you don't notice it yet um, through your fingers. But if you measured it, you'd probably be able to figure it out. Another telltale indicator is the oil seal. If the turbocharger has oil in the turbine, it's because this oil seal is leaking. Now typically that is because the thrust bearing has failed. If the shaft moves forward and back, as you can tell, this seal will no longer sit on its little groove. If it pops in and out of this little groove, it's going to leak. And when it leaks, it's going to push oil into the turbine, you're going to burn oil. So if the thrust bearing fails, typically you will see oil in the turbine at some point. So if you have oil in your turbine, it's most likely not just the seal, it's most likely the thrust bearing. Which leads me to another point on that. The oil seals in these turbochargers that are essentially like a piston ring. I'll show you up close on this one. It's basically just a piston ring. It's a metal ring right there that gets clamped under pressure whenever it's stuck into the, the center section. And it works based off of, you know, speed of the shaft. And essentially it prevents gas from the turbine pushing into the oil um, galleys of the turbocharger. It's not necessarily supposed to be a full out oil seal because um, most of this oil is supposed to come down and bypass this shaft anyways and then go down into the drain before it actually touches that seal. But it does prevent oil from moving out to the back side of it as well um, because oil pressure as it comes through will push out the back eventually. But um, if the thrust bearing is bad, that's typically what causes the oil seal to fail, not necessarily the oil seal just failing on its own. And I'll put a footnote on that. The oil seals can fail on their own, of course, but it's very rare compared to the thrust bearing. Typically, if there's oil in your turbine, it's usually due to the thrust bearing or one of the issues that's highlighted in one of our other, other videos about why there could be oil backed up into your turbocharger even though it hasn't failed. So if the turbo's perfectly fine, there's oil back there, watch our other video, and that'll explain that pretty in depth. So I repeat, again, forward and back shaft play, no good. Side to side shaft play, is fine within certain parameters as long as there is no dragging of the compressor housing. Again, like I said, if the wheel is dragging the compressor housing, it's either due to a mismachining or there is actually forward and back shaft play, but it's so minuscule that you can't actually feel it with your fingers yet, but there is enough to actually cause it to drag. Turbochargers have very tight tolerances, sometimes less than a millimeter. Um, so even a, a small difference on the thrust bearing like this can cause it to fail. So check for shaft play. If there's forward and back shaft play, it's bad. If there's no forward and back shaft play, it probably isn't. Hopefully this will clear the air on shaft play. A lot of people have a misconception about it and think side to side shaft play is bad. Um, as I said, forward and back is no good. Side to side is okay, depending on the circumstances. Um, so maybe this will help you clear up some issues you may have. Maybe it'll help you determine if the turbocharger has actually failed, or maybe it's something else going on um, that's not related to the turbocharger. So, uh, this should help you rule out the turbocharger for sure if it's good or bad as far as the thrust bearing and the internal bearings being good or bad.